Hey y'all, this is Quay. Good to be with you again. This week we are talking about salvation. Uh, so if you were with us last week, we did an intro on what is salvation? What does that even mean? You know, we hear that word all the time. And kind of to wrap up what we said last week, what does that mean in terms of the church? In terms of when we speak about salvation, um, as we read it in the Bible, as Christians, what we mean is that we are saved from God's wrath for relationship with God. So if you didn't get that video, check um, the week before this. So either scroll up or scroll down on this blog. Um, if you're on YouTube here, the video is um, in our channel. So click the link um, and you can find that right there. Today, we are continuing that series, right? We're in this for the whole month of August, talking about what is salvation and all kind of the aspects of it. So today, what we're going to talk about is God's glory, right? God's glory. But wait a minute question, what does God's glory have to do with our salvation? Because we're talking about salvation, right? Here's the deal. God is motivated by his own glory, right? Everything God does, listen, everything that God does is in order to bring more glory to himself. In other words, everything God does is motivated by seeking his own glory. Right now, before we get started, I know you're hearing that and you're saying, oh, that sounds kind of selfish, that sounds kind of bad, like, I don't know how I feel about that, but let me tell you this. When we humans seek our own glory, that is bad, because we are flawed and we're sinful, and the only good things we can do are because of God working through us, because of the grace and the mercy God gives us. But God, who is holy, who is perfect, who is eternal, not only deserves glory, he does, but it's right for him to seek his own glory. And in turn, it's right for us to seek his glory too, right? So if any, if any of us wants to seek our own glory that is wrong and that is sinful and that is prideful, if God wants to seek his own glory, he's the only one worthy of being glorified. And so that's good and it's right. And actually, it means God sees clearly because if he wanted to seek someone else's glory, it would mean that something or someone else is bigger and better and more glorious than God. And we know that certainly isn't true. You know, if uh, you look at uh, Isaiah uh, 48, 4, or excuse me, 48, 11, um, or Isaiah 43, 7, there's places where God says, I do all, all things that I do, I do for my own glory. That's what God says in those places. And we know because of that, that we humans were created to bring God glory. Listen to that. We were created to bring God glory. We were made in God's image. We do so many things and we have the potential to bring God so much glory. 43, 7 in Isaiah specifically talks about that. He made all of creation, all people for the purpose of God's own glory. So we got that, right? God's biggest purpose, his own glory. Our purpose in life, glorify him because that's what we were created to do. Even by virtue of existing in his image, we glorify him. And there are ways, certainly ways we cannot glorify him. That's sin in us. But we have the potential to glorify God. That's what we were made to do. So how does that relate to salvation? Here's what I want to say. So I'm going to switch arms here. My arms whoo, getting tired. I'm going to switch sides. There you go. Here's what I want to say. Salvation at its heart is not about us. Right? Salvation isn't about you. Salvation isn't about me. It is about God and his glory. God saved us from wrath, for relationship, from our sins. He made us new in him for his own glory. What's crazy, here's a little side note. What's crazy and amazing, praise God, that when God seeks his own glory, it is the best thing for us. Right? Everything that happens is for God's glory and our good because we were made to glorify God. So when God is glorified, that is his will. And that is the best thing that can happen for and to us. So when God is glorified, we receive the benefits of that as well. Right? So God saved us for his own glory. God went to the cross in Jesus Christ for his own glory. He took our punishment and our sin for his glory. And now you'll say, oh, I'm sure there's like, I bet there's plenty of other 
reasons God saved us, right? Didn't it say in John 3, 16, because God so loved the world, he sent his only son. Wasn't God motivated by love? Or to show his grace and to show his mercy, he sent his son. Aren't those good motivations? Maybe that's why God did it, to redeem us, to have a relationship with us, because he wants to know us, because he wants us to have freedom. Yes, and amen. There are so many motivations that God has for what he does, but hear this, in and through every single thing that God does, and specifically in and through every aspect of creation, every aspect of our salvation, in and through every other motivation he does have, his glory is through and in all those things. Right? God, because God loved us, he sent Jesus, and that brings him glory because we see Jesus' love, and we say, look how loving God is. God shows his mercy and his grace and his wisdom in saving us. He shows how he is above all things. He beats even death. So creation, as it's redeemed in Jesus' work on the cross, in salvation, brings God glory in every single part of it. And what's more, if we, as sinners, broken people, look at God and say, wow, God, I was trash and you died for me how much more glory am i going to bring him because look at what he did for me i didn't deserve it i didn't deserve any of this and he loved me anyways he died for me anyways praise god and that brings him glory because it means every good thing that we can do on this side of having jesus is because of jesus and god's spirit in us so every time i do something good every time i see the fruit of my labors that doesn't bring me glory, because I couldn't do it myself. That brings God glory in saying, wow, God, look at this thing that you did. You allowed me to do this, but at the end of the day, what does Ryan say? HGA, his glory alone. And how good is that? So today, we're gonna look at Ephesians 1 and talks about what God did in salvation. He's redeemed us, he's predestined us, all these things. But a couple times in here, he says, Paul writes, he did these things to the praise of his glorious name. He did these things to the praise of his glorious name. So as we look at this passage together, my ask is that we would look for the ways God is glorified through this. So that's my hope. Check it out. I'm praying for you guys as you get in the word. Uh, this week, we're looking at Ephesians 1. And you know what? Next week, sneak peek, we're looking at Ephesians 2, talking about salvation. Continue this on. Got questions? Send them my way. We'll try to answer them. Love y'all.